Hi, Mark T. The Handyman here. Today we're going to look at what is one of the more common furnace not working service calls. On this service call, the furnace will start up, the burner ignites, but then quickly goes off. And then the furnace will try to start several more times and finally will go into an alarm. What I'm going to do is to give you a little knowledge on common furnace sequence of operation and hopefully enable you to troubleshoot the problem yourself. I have found that this problem is one of the top three service calls. But luckily, this problem is easy to solve, sometimes without any parts. And if you happen to need a part, the part is relatively inexpensive and less than $20 in most cases. With just a little bit of knowledge about your furnace operation and what some of the parts are, you should be able to fix this problem every time. I'm going to take the combustion cover off so we can see the burner section. Your furnace might not look exactly like this furnace, but depending on how old your furnace is and depending on the brand, this is consistent with most furnaces over the last 15 years. If your furnace is not a high efficiency furnace, your burners will be open and you will not have the cover over the combustion compartment. Now I'm going to turn the furnace on. In most cases, you will have an on-off switch on your furnace. If not on your furnace, the on-off switch should be somewhere close by. I want to run you through the sequence of operation and show you the seven steps involved in the startup of the furnace. Number one, the thermostat has to call for heat. Number two, your draft induced motor comes on. Number three, the draft motor operation is confirmed by the pressure switch. Number four, the surface igniter starts to glow. After a few seconds, the igniter will get hot enough to ignite the natural gas. Number five, the gas valve is energized and opens to allow gas to flow through the burner, thus allowing the burners to ignite. Number six, now the flame detection sensor confirms that there is flame and will allow the burners to heat the heat exchanger. Number seven, after about 35 or 45 seconds, your main blower will start up and begin to push the heated air through the ductwork and through the vents. This completes the sequence of operation for this furnace. This furnace cycle, from the time the thermostat calls for the heat to the time the blower turns on, takes less than two minutes. Now let's look at the common failure where the burner is turning on and off and how to fix this failure. Number one, the thermostat has a call for heat. Number two, your draft inducer motor comes on. Number three, the draft motor operation is confirmed by the pressure switch. Number four, the surface igniter starts to glow and after a few seconds, the igniter will get hot enough to ignite the natural gas. Number five, the gas valve is energized and opens to allow the flow through the burner, thus allowing the burners to ignite. But now comes the break in the cycle. Now, instead of the flame detection sensor sensing that there is a flame, the flame sensor does not sense the flame and immediately shuts down the ignition process. After four of these cycles, the furnace will go into a lockout situation. Here is what is happening. If we cannot confirm that the gas has been ignited, then we must shut down the gas valve. Because the gas being delivered inside the furnace, but no flame is being ignited, obviously this can be a dangerous scenario. So what is the issue? The issue is that the sensor is not detecting the flame even though we actually do have a flame. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that the wire connections on the sensor and the circuit board are good. If you have a loose connection or damaged wire, this will cause the sensor not to be able to send the small current signal to the circuit board, which will cause the circuit board to shut off the gas valve, thus keeping the unit from completing the sequence of operation. Also look to make sure that the wire that is connected to the sensor is not burnt or damaged in any way. If there is any noticeable damage to the flame sensor, then more than likely you will need a new sensor. 
But for now, we are going to remove the sensor and clean it. This Lennox harness does not have an easily accessible flame sensor. So I'm going to show you what I think is the best, easiest way to get the flame sensor out. Unfortunately, the screw that attaches the flame sensor to the burner section comes from underneath and the screw and the sensor are barely visible looking from the front of the furnace. Here is a quarter inch deep socket on a quarter inch socket wrench. That will actually fit in the space that is allowed, but getting your hands back there and trying to get the quarter inch metal screw out is very difficult. Because of the visibility restrictions, you pretty much are blindfolded and cannot see the screw or the flame sensor. So because of this physical and slight restrictions, we are going to take off this combustion air T assembly, which will mean we will need to use our quarter inch nut driver to undo these three hose clamps that hold the rubber T in place. Once we loosen the three clamps, we will wiggle the rubber T and remove the T from the combustion area. Now we are going to take our quarter inch nut driver and remove the screw that holds the flame sensor in place. You need to be careful not to drop the screw into the combustion air outlet tubes, so I have placed a Ziploc bag over the combustion air outlet tube especially when I will be reinstalling the flame sensor. So here is our flame sensor. I am going to show you a couple different items that you can use to clean the flame sensor. You want to gently brush off the carbon or soot or any other sediment that has collected on the flame sensor. In the past, I have also used a piece of sandpaper. Some people even recommend a dollar bill. You do not want to use anything harsh on the flame sensor, just something that will gently clean the flame sensor. Checking and cleaning your flame sensor really is a yearly maintenance task that might keep you from having your furnace go down on the coldest day of the winter. Okay, let's reinstall the flame sensor. As you can see, I still have my plastic bag on top of the inducer motor. I'm going to put the screw in the sensor hole and then move the sensor up to the burner section. Next, I will feel around until I get the screw started. There we go. You got it. There are some people who say you can come from the top of the furnace and clean the furnace sensor. I have never done it that way. It doesn't seem like it would be any easier than how we did it today. Plus, you cannot replace the flame sensor from the top, only clean it. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the sequence of operation cycle. First, we have the inducer fan motor. Now, we have the pressure switches satisfied. Next, the surface igniter and then the circuit board will energize the gas valve and now we are on our way. Now let's put our compartment cover back on. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up or a like. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.